going to take a look at, you know, the positives of using vocal tuning. So if you're just joining me right now, if you don't know me, I'm Mary Z. This is my channel, Voice Hacks. I'm a vocal instructor, metal vocalist, yada, yada, yada. You can check out the rest of the channel. I also have a lot of recording experience and I'm fairly decent at vocal tuning using a plugin called Melodyne. So we'd mentioned earlier that auto-tune is actually not a, a, a noun, really. It is a noun named off of a brand name. It's a trademark of a plugin called Antares Auto-Tune. And actually, I am way more familiar with using a different type of tuning plugin called Melodyne by Celimony. And I just want you guys to know, too, I don't have, at this time, I'm not endorsed by any of these companies. So the products that I'm using, Reaper, Melodyne, these are all just my choice, personally, and stuff that I've bought. You know, sometimes companies give me gear and software and stuff, but these I, I just genuinely like to use. I think you guys have all been waiting for this. So last thing we tuned was we took the isolated vocals from Radiohead Creep, and we tuned them. And we realized, actually, not only did it kill a lot of the blues in his voice it just killed a lot of the expression as well and actually even though he's not a mathematical robot he was actually singing a lot closer to the pitches there wasn't a huge dramatic difference when we tuned it what i'm saying here about auto-tune is and tuning plugins is that they can be used for positive things too and we're going to bring back the puddle of mud about a girl i know that's like come and gone or whatever but it is a, an example of a performance that didn't go well for the vocalist that day for whatever reason again we're not criticizing we're not judging we are just here to be constructive and positive and we're going to just tune these vocals and pretend we were in post-production and see if we could salvage it because sometimes that happens like you have a live appearance that day is the day you're on Sirius XM it's not another day you don't live there um, and say that's the day you do bad I mean it just sucks you know um, and but could we save it in post could we fix it well, you know, yes and no. Uh, there are things I'm not going to be able to change. Uh, the way someone sang, how long they held out notes, the way they shaped their words. Tuning doesn't always take someone who can't sing and make them sing perfectly. But you could take a singer who's singing generally good in the rest of their life and on their off day probably salvage it. So let's take a look at what it sounded. And thank you to all the random <laughs> YouTubers who isolate all these vocals, who make these instrumentals. You guys are where I'm getting this all. And uh, this was even the instrumental from this actual recording because they played it, I think, in a different t key than the original. Uh, I don't know, maybe. But either way, I think it should have been down to it a lot farther. But here we go. Let's hear the original. And then we're going to see if we can do anything about it in Melodyne. Okay. All right, that's enough. <laughs> so I want to add this melody in here. And so it's going to read all the notes. It's going to detect it. Let's see. So it detected it, but it didn't do anything to it yet. It doesn't do anything to it until I tell it to. Um. I know it's like people ask me how I didn't laugh at this in my reaction. I, I teach people for a living. So no matter how bad it is, I am tr pretty much trained not to laugh at it. Because most of the time, I get it. When people make mistakes, it's funny and everything. But I also have a lot of sympathy being a vocalist myself. I don't want to be laughing at people like that sometimes, you know. So I, I don't know. I think I've just trained myself not to because um, I wouldn't laugh at a vocal student who's learning, you know, and they're probably not going to sing real well. And I think that's where I get it from. Uh, so the first note is supposed to be A sharp. And there's a lot of scooping up to it. So this, I'm not actually going to robot. It, okay, so this one is when someone's making a lot of mistakes, you don't want to do the what we did with the radio head, where you go up here and you just slide the button because it's going to tune it to a lot of wrong notes. Oh, dude, we should tune the Smash Mouth one. I didn't know that. Well, the thing is, if he's saying wrong words, this is one where he's like saying the right words. So I think I could salvage it. 
Um, if it's like a Vince Neil thing, I didn't. I actually have not watched the Smash Mouth thing. I I need to, but um, maybe we should react to it on here on the stream. It depends on what he's doing. If it's just like this, where it's kind of out of tune, we can probably salvage it. If he's saying different, the wrong words or something, I don't know if I can fix that. Realize too, now this will make you guys appreciate the limits of processing. A lot of people are like, oh, they just auto-tuned him. He's not any good. If you actually sing pretty close to the pitch, the auto-tune didn't, doesn't do much for you. So you've got to be able to sing still. Uh, this is going to fix it somewhat. Oh, okay. Someone says the Smash Mouth one was garble. Yeah, that's the thing. It's not a tuning thing. So this one is also a specific example that I picked because he was saying the right words still and coming in at the right spots and everything. And it really just sounded like a key, like voice strain tuning issue thing. So this is going to fix some of it, but it's going to sound unnatural. I should always know, like, most of Nirvana's melodies are these pentatonics. That was all the black keys there. This is going way up into the middle C octave here. And, again, it feels like it's way too high for what he should be doing that day. I feel like this key should be lowered. First thing I'm going to do is straighten out some of the tone. Well, actually, I'll do that last, I think. It should be C sharp there. This is why, I, if, if, for those of you who are just joining, I keep a piano running when I do this. So I can see what the notes actually were meant to be. And as I was talking about earlier, I don't have perfect pitch. I just have good relative pitch, so I can usually find it pretty quick within a few seconds. And that's taken years of practice because I, and I have to have a piano reference. I, I don't know if I'd be able to tell you what those notes are without that. That's the difference between someone with relative pitch and perfect pitch. So I, I fixed those first notes. Here we go. Oh, you can't see it. Thank you. It's a little low. I keep forgetting that the bottom of that screen just doesn't like to show up for y'all. I keep thinking you need to see this with the vocals in here, but you really don't, right? In response to Patrick's question, if someone had the intended notes written down, I could, like if it was on a piece of sheet music, I could look at that and then tune it. You really want to use your ears, even if there is... But we're, and we're never going to have sheet music for modern stuff most of the time. Um, if you're in a band like that, then you're kind of lucky in that sense. Sometimes I get sheet music for like metal operas. Uh, let's see. Okay. Okay. Uh, so it's supposed to be... F sharp. E Z G sharp. And I'm looking at the sound wave there, not so much the blob. And then F sharp should be the next one. So let me also, I'm going to highlight all of these and I'm going to um, straighten out the pitch drift. I really want those to sound a little bit straight. Easy. Easy. It sounds like he, in the beginning of that note, that he does something crazy. Let's hear it again. Whoops. See, this is why I keep moving it, because I want to keep putting my cursor in the background. Sorry, guys. I'll keep moving it back up. Wow, it's so weird how that like uh, Okay, let's tune that down a little bit Much better So here we go This is this is like really sharp, even though visibly it looks, that's why you want to use your ears. See, 
Just sounds so weird, though. Well, there's just some things I'm not going to be able to fix. Sometimes there's just some stuff going on in the voice that I can't fix. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to get it as close as I can. Let's A, B that because that still sounds a, a shitload better. So to A, B it, I'm going to have to move this over a little bit. Uh, I guess you guys might be able to see it over there. So let me just A, B it. This is w without the tuning. It's here with the tuning. That sounds sharp still on the top. Like it must have been like wildly sharp because I'm putting it on G4, but the note is supposed to be G sharp 4, but that sounds wildly out of tune. So um, let's hear that again. That sounds better. And this still sounds really sharp too. And that looks like it's in the wrong spot. Let's just see if that helps. That's better. Let me just do it again. That's much better. That's much better. Uh, well, it's somewhat unfixable. <laughs> Yeah, that's probably as good as that part's going to get. Honestly, that's so much better, though. Like, just this would have made it a much more salvaged performance, you know? This would have taken a little bit of effort on someone's part, but it would have saved it. Look right here and right here. This is a point where the person went up really fast before they came back down and landed on the pitch, which actually is the way most people sing. They scoop up to it and then land on it. That's something you can see visually here. The rest of it, you just want to use your ears. It's just sort of a visual representation so I can actually move these around. But it doesn't visually represent all the texture and the grit that they're doing or anything like that. The thing is that I like to do with Melodyne is just go through and do it the best I can for the moment. Then when I go back through the second time or the third time, I keep making adjustments. One thing, you don't want to sit on a spot a place too long you'll hear things when you come back for a pass keep working forwards you know and then and then fix it again the second or third time you come around so i'm gonna keep moving forward let me hear do you could see do do but that's not bad so this just is way too high i mean he's singing up to like g sharp which is a lot of people don't realize, a lot of male vocalists, how high Kurt Cobain sings. So let's hear this. I do. Oops. I do. Thank you. Okay, so that's I a little sharp. I do. I do. Thank you. These are little scoops. I do. You want to leave those? That That's how people sing. I do. Thank you. Th those aren't bad. Th that's real. Uh, thank you. So, so this one I can already see that this sound wave jumps higher than the intended note. So I'm going to split that right away because that's just really jumping like out of the range. Thank you for this too. So it's supposed to be. And this is what's killing him is the, the G sharp, you know. And again, it's just the wrong key. That's pretty high. So this is supposed to go da, 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 like that. And um, it's just too hard to hit that, you know. I think that's pretty high for a lot of male vocalists. And I would lower this to where like E is the highest note, like a third. You fit this too. Aha, I'm fixing it. Ha ha. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Fit this too. 
Look at that. Thank you. Fit this too. I didn't do any of my straightening it out stuff. Let's do that really quick. I really want to hear what that sounds like. Thank you. Fit this too. I do. That's what I'm saying. The G sharp in the chest in the belt voice. Fit this shoe. Like for most male vocalists who are going to fit in the baritone range and some of the people who are in the tenors, that's pretty strenuous to go all the way up. Like Kurt Cobain belted pretty high. Let me just keep going here. Thank you. Fit this too. Yeah, this is great. This is so much better now. So. Thank you. Fit this too. This one, there's a little texture stuff in there that I can't do anything about. But I'm going to split this one a little bit and um, just kind of make it fit more evenly into the sound wave. Okay, let's see how this sounds. Thank you. Fit this too. I do. Fit this. It sounds a little high still in some places. Thank you. Fit this too. I do. Yeah, that's it. That's it. <laughs> okay, so we're not going to listen to A, B till we get a little more done. I want to... I do. That's A sharp or B flat. Something that has weird, you know, like... Okay, so we're going to fix it. Hear this. I don't know. What happens if I do that? Fit this too. I do. Mm, doesn't really work very good. Let me just see. Something is not right there, though. Let me just zoom in on it a little bit. And let me just cut this a little bit. And see what is going on here it's like a harmonic you hear that shoo like a harmonic in there i just want to lower it this is now lowering a noise so i don't know what pitch will sound good this is some kind of harmonic that we're fixing here so we're just gonna move it to where maybe it doesn't spike that yeah that was better where it doesn't spike that bad so maybe that works. It's you, I do. That's better. Yeah, I could try to delete it. Let's see how it sounds with the music. And then maybe I'll delete it. What does it sound if it's gone? Fit this too. I do. I have to delete that too. Thank you. Fit this too. I do. Uh, that doesn't sound quite right. I think we should. We have to leave it and just kind of take it where, I do. where I tune I it. Do. But let me just see if I can lower that a little bit farther anyway. Fit this too. I do. I do. Uh, do. Oh, I do. I do. That one I want to do my pitch drift thing with. Do, I do. I do. Yeah. Let me get rid of that. Do, I do. I do. Have I clear? Oh, God. Yeah, and also there's some weird sounds in these isolated vocals because people are using plugins and stuff. They don't have this track. So where I ripped these isolated vocals from is not like the actual vocal track. So there is some noises and things that do sound funny because it's not the for real vocal track. It's ripped from the instrumental. So just realize, guys, um, I'm not exactly working with perfect tracks, but 
This one's making me feel a lot more satisfied because it's way more satisfying to take something that was really far and correct it, or at least try to put it into something salvageable. So, so I think when we go back and A-B this, you guys are going to be shocked at how much better it is. You're still hearing some of the flaws because there are flaws, you know, we're only human beings, but this was a gritty rock song. So I think the flaws still could have been a nice part of the salvageable here. So, but it's the G sharp. It's belting to the G sharp. And that's all we're trying to learn from this. We're not trying to troll or anything. I think I missed a part. I need an easy friend. I do with the head to hand. Yeah, I, I missed that part, the second part. Um, so we need to go back and do that. I was doing the third part, though. With the head to hand. Okay. Uh, so C, D sharp, C sharp, C sharp, D sharp. So this is another thing where he has like this real spike thing happening here in the beginning. It's like a squawk or something. With the head to Let's just see if I can make uh, all these sound waves like in the D sharp are supposed to be. With the head to Oh gosh that G sharp nobody wants to sing the G sharp so let's go up here and let's assume I'm just doing this real quick off of what I know and then we'll listen to it with the head to hand Somewhat salvageable. I feel with the head to hand. Yeah, I don't know where I would get an original vocal stem from. I mean, that would be awesome, but um, that'd be hard to come by for something. Uh, so this is just the way someone ripped it out of it. Still cool that I can do this for you guys, though. So. I feel with the head to hand. Well, in this case, this is just to salvage, you know, a bad day. I feel like there's so much sharpness to a lot of these tones because he has like a, <laughs> there's just some weird sharp things like high overtones happening. It could just be the way the vocals were extracted. There's like all this like whoop. I think it's like these like squawky things he's doing on that day, you know, and it's not his fault, really. I mean, we don't know what contributed to that. So I like that's still sharp as well. This I can't change much. Head to hand. Maybe I can just go a little less sharp. Head to hand. That sounds better when it's like more in the middle. Head to hand. Okay, not bad. I think I'm doing pretty good. is weird there is some weird stuff happening in here so let's split that up a little bit i think that Have I clue? yeah that made it much better there's some weird stuff happening there too <laughs> whoops um yeah See how that kind of goes up for a second? I'm just going to bring that down a little bit. Kind of make sure. Have I, clue? I feel like there's like kind of a weird spike in there. Have I, clue? 
Yeah, I don't know. So let me just try to fix that a little bit. I do have a clue. Something. Not bad. I do have a clue. Take it and it's right. Oof. Take advantage while Take it. So here it goes to an accidental Take And Okay, you see that sound wave is crazy right there? We need to make that C sharp it's Wow Wow. There it is. So here we go. We got. Take it, then it's round. Take it, then it's round. Yeah, this is the Puddle of Mud cover of this song, by the way. Kurt Cobain sang this really well. Uh, this was a cover by Puddle of Mud that went viral because he made a lot of mistakes. And I'm just using it as an example to show how. What the positives could be of autotune? Because I'm really salvaging something here uh, from a live performance. And so. Take it, then it's wrong. I don't know. That's tough. That's a tough one. I do have a clue. Take it, then it's wrong. Ugh. One thing I can try to do is delete this, and you can stretch things out in Melodyne. Take it, and it's wrong. <laughs> Take it, and it's wrong. Oh, man. I don't know. What if I do it with this one? Take it, and it's wrong. <laughs> no, that is not going to work. Uh, I don't know, guys. You hang me out to try. You hang me out to try. Yeah. Hey, me. Oh, Lord. Uh, hey. You hang. You hang me out to try. Me out to. Out to dry. dry. Try, which will be down here. You hang me out to try. Oh, goodness. Where was that? Where did it go? You hang me out to try. Okay. You hang me out to See, there's all this weird yeah. stuff. See how it's rendering, like, all this distortion? You don't have to do all this individual note stuff in Melodyne, you can do it on global settings, but it will not really work if you're doing it with something this distorted and this messy. You have to go through and really manually do stuff with it. Um, so let's see here. Yeah, well, I think that one's gonna have to stay like that for a second. I think I might actually just wait and see if there's a better take of that and copy and paste it. Let's keep going. You hang me out to try. Because I, I think the chorus is the same. Night. Let's actually listen and see if there's a better take of the chorus. You hang me out to try. I can't see you every night. Thrill. That might actually be a better take of it. Um, let's see how he did in the last one. So, probably this one is better. Uh, you hang me out to try. I haven't tuned these yet. We're going to take that one and tune it for the first and second ones. I think the third chorus, I could do it, but I don't know, guys. Let me copy that and... I can't see. And we're going to paste this one here. And let's just see here. You hang me out to try. Let me make sure that that lines you. up with the instruments. You hang me out to try. Putting this a little more in time here. 
I think he just did that kind of late at that part, so I'm going to adjust that as well. Timing can be edited as well, everybody, so you can really make things less bad. Hold on. Here we go. All right, let me just move it over a little bit. All right. So I think that I can tune a lot better. So, and Melodyne will automatically pick up what I pasted there. So I can just go back to. You hang me out to try. So let's hear up to that much because this has been a lot of work for me to do to tune that much. Um, so let's hear it from the beginning through that much. Here we go. So what I'm going to do actually is delete this part and see if this take of it was better. Uh, I want to see if like all of that was better on the second time. I think I can tune that. I think I can tune those. You take it, Ben. Take it. Take it. Take it, Ben. It's wow. That's what it's supposed to be. But this is so. Take it, Ben. It's wow. So weird on the distortion. Take it, Ben. It's wow. Take it, Ben. It's wow. And this also shows you some of the limits of autotune, the things you can't that you can't fix. What killed them was the G. The G and the G sharp on this song. Too high of a song. My theory stands. Don't do it in the original key. Just too high. Oh, that went really sharp at some point. Oh my. Well, let's listen to it with the music now. This is the tuned one, kind of as best as I could do. Maybe I'll change a couple things and we will yeah you know it's just exactly there's a limit of stuff you can do you still got to be able to sing not bad hard all right well let's hear it without the tuning okay so that's with me spending a lot of time on the tuning let's hear it without this was the original guys no tuning at all did not touch this here we go All 
right now. This is with the tuning. Here we go. They just fix that right really. So there's limits to it. Part of it could have been salvaged. Part of it couldn't, you know. So one of the things that surprises people when we're talking about tuning plugins and auto-tune and things like that is that there is a limit. Oh, well, it's just auto-tune right they're they're not any good it's just auto-tune well remember watching this because it doesn't really do i mean like you can see how much effort i have to put in to just tuning it to somewhat acceptable and tuning isn't everything another lesson that i'm hoping that these types of fun videos will teach you guys is that tuning is not everything you know uh and that if someone's throat is dry someone mentioned dryness or different things, um, you know, going on with their vocal technique, the actual tone of their voice, how the sound is resonating. I can't change any of that, how they approach the notes in and out of it. Sometimes there's so much grit, the computer isn't really rendering anything, and it's just hearing noise and not a note, which can happen to a good singer as well. Nothing beats vocal technique. And look at how long it took me to sit there. And I could have practiced that song a few times during that time. So I think if you're having a hard day, like he obviously was on that day, you need to look at your bandmates and say, yo, everybody, let's drop this tuning, you know, because um, we'd all like to hit high notes in an ideal world. And maybe it's a song where sometimes we have hit those notes before. But if we're not having the right day, especially for an acoustic performance, where we don't have to deal with tracks or anything like that, we should really just tune it down. Because I think actually, everything below the G and the G sharp what we saw in there uh, was actually pretty in tune right people who are you know tuning down a little bit to where it's actually going well that day it saves you from making a tough performance on that even if someone would have gone through in post-production they might not have been able to fix a lot of that there was a little bit of you know problems with that so um you know and i don't know what this person's lifestyle is like or what's going on here so but you guys are super awesome that was really fun um would you like to see me do more of that i would say it's not actually after doing it with uh, radiohead and this one i would say it's not very interesting if it's not a good recording i would say like it's kind of boring when i tune someone who can actually sing because they were actually pretty close to the pitch, right? You know, I'll be getting back to my usual reactions and lessons and tutorials. And if any of you guys want to sign up for lessons with me, all you got to do is uh, go to my booking portal here. I teach people to sing and scream uh, every day. It's my full-time job. Thanks, everybody. I hope you have an awesome afternoon. Hit me up for lessons on that website link in the chat or at voicehacks at gmail.com. Some of you I see at lessons and have seen. Thanks for coming. I'll see you all later. Thank you very much. And I, uh, I hope you have an awesome, awesome rest of your day or evening. Bye, everybody.